Hey guys, in this tutorial I want to teach you how you can design and develop an optimum stand according to cardiac biomechanics. First of all, I want to describe what a stand is and what are the features of an optimum cardiac stand. A stand is a tiny wire mesh tube, which you can clearly see over here and it props open an artery when the coronary are narrowed because of the built-ups as you might know the coronary arteries are like pipes and after a while the residue of fatty tissue results the blockage and if it's not been treated on time it can even result in cardiac arrest or even death so using proper cardiac stent gives us the opportunity to make the blood flow just goes around and through the arteries without any problem. The stents are first gets into the location where the blockage is by guided transfer like using the catheters and after it's been located on desired location a balloon will expand the stand and after it's been fixed and opened the dredges and the dredges of fatty tissue eliminated the balloon will be flattened and the stand will remain on desired locations as you can clearly see over here, it's a schematic version of where, what is the role of a stent. The stent will be inserted into plug area and it will be expanded and after the plaque removed, the blood flow will move across the arteries in normal ratio. So now we need to understand what are the aims of using stents. As I described first, we, when we require to open a blocked coronary arteries, we need to use a stent. On the other hand, while we are using a stent, the blood flow in arteries will return into normal case and it's non-invasive version of opening a blockage and a plug inside the arteries. The initial stents were introduced in 1980s by John Robert Dugan and they were bare metals and after a while, after decades of working hard on stents, the drug eluting stents and the biocompatible surface stents were introduced. We have different type of stents, one of them are self-expanding, the other one is balloon expandable, However, according to desired application, according to intensity of the surgery, we are required to use proper form of stents. The stents, the, the one form of stents are coil stents. They are simply coils and they are located in the arteries around the mesh and they control the blood flow in the arteries. The other types are mesh stents, which are the one that we need to develop. On the other hand, we do have different types like annular coil stent, the tubular shape stents, and the ganglion shape stents. According to research in different stent design and influence on lumen loss and neointymia proliferation, the effect of restrenosis rate gives us enough detail about what kind of stent we need to use. So, as I first introduced and described that the objective of this study is developed a, an optimum step.
So first we need to understand what are the features of optimum stance. The features like flexibility because we implement the stance inside artery so it's, it needs to be flexible not rigid otherwise it will hurt the arteries and there is a high risk of being broken. On the other have the trackability it needs to easily move across the arteries, the visibility and biocompatibility since it's an external element. If it's not biocompatible and if it's not configurative with the subjective tissue, there is a high risk that it results in reaction by self-defense mecha self mechanism of body. One of the recent development in stent technology is using anti-traumatic treatment by stents. It means on the surface of metal structure a polymer is coated and on the top of the uh, polymer coating the researchers used a month of the medicines and drugs to uh, be inserted into the subjective tissue and reduce the risk of heart attack. So, first of all, we need to understand what how stents acts. When stent in being inserted in a subjective tissue, it result in variation in blood pressure and blood flow rate, and the ratio are different in two main areas. The first one is the place that the blood wants to get into the vein and the other one is the place where the blood gets off the vein. In these areas, because of the strong variation in blood pressure, the turbulent blood flow will be resulted. So according to studies, presence of stent with larger disease vessel affects the producing higher pressure at vessel entrance than the exit. The elasticity of the vessel is really important because if the vessel is not elastic enough, it will be rigid and it will inc it will expose an enormous amount of pressure on the stent and therefore it can result in in flow rate variations and tuberculosis so the coronary design how we can optimize this issue is depend on the progression of endothelialization, neointymia, hyperplasia and restenosis. The coronary stent design affects the spatial distribution of wall shear stress. Why it affects? Because the arteries during each contraction of muscle will result in dilation and contraction and if the stent does not follow the pulse of the arteries, it, uh, it can hurt the adjacent tissues. Two of the most common softwares in order to develop stents are computational fluid dynamics and surrogate management framework. The softwares are dominantly used to optimal stent design. By using computational fluid dynamic, it is possible to clearly understand the flow rate and what are the meshes should be. The cardiovascular stents are one of the most effective methods to treat coronary arteries. The problem related to these kind of stents are restenosis after implementation and using which could be avoided by using drug eluting stent which 
gets applied on a stand by coating element. According to studies which have undertaken in this field and it's clear that there is a co correlation between uh, wall hemodynamics and neo-initial hyperplastasia which can result to restenosis. The LS is also correlated between the areas of inhibited endothelial migration onto the stent surface. The stent geometry and the effect of distribution of WSS imparted on the vessel wall. One of the most important changes in coronavirus in a cardiovascular system after stent implementation is change in the hemodynamics of the vessel. The computational studies helps us in order to idealize the geometry of desired standard. The thinner structure and being aligned with the natural flow direction will reduce the shear wall pressure to the minimum possible level. However, in this case, the thinner structure will be fragile. One of the most effective designing methods is using shape-optimized algorithm and proven convergence theory in design process. The limitation of this study, however, relates to two-dimensional model and optimization of single stent agent. The gradient-based optimization method and using the derivative-free method helps us to develop an automated framework to design the hemodynamically optimal coronary stent. The hypothesized and new investigation says that the strut angle and primary direction of flow has, a, uh, has an optimal effect on the number of circumferentially repeated cells and the second set of optimization based on determining the optimal strut angle and correlated with optimum number of NC computed in the first optimization method. The modeling we use as the following methods is the, the stent cell axial length, the circumferential distance between adjacent structures and strut angle. The negligible strut thickness and large intrastruct areas will control and reduce time average wall shear stress. For achieving desired and designated goals, we propose that we should change the thickness of the walls from 1 mm squared to 3 mm squared and the vessels are modeled with stent artery ratios are 1, 1, 1 and the length of 32 mm. However, the expanded region of vessel diameter was 18 mm in length and 2 mm tapered section connection stent to unstented regions. After analyzing the diameter and the length of the missile and the designated optimal stent design, we achieved the optimum length to 2.25 and 3 mm to diameter of 2.475 and 3.3 mm. As we as I mentioned uh, formerly. Each of these struts are contributing a mesh and their thickness, their length and the angle of intra-strut part has a critical importance in developing the mesh because as much as the thinner and close, uh, closer with the cardiac angle will have a better result however it will end up into extreme difference between inter and exit pressure to the weights.
to define the cell geometry for a given NCLC and according to stent diameter I computed to maintain constant in stroke area. The previous methods were merely concentrated on optimizing the theta or intrastrate angle. However, we understand that the number of meshes, the diameter of meshes, and the length of mesh is as important as intrastrate angle. After we made simulations and computational simulations, we understood that the model given according to the parameters is uh, as below. First, we generated optimal stand according to proposed criteria, and after here we can clearly see when this stand gets fit inside the arteries according to variation of the blood flow in time we can clearly understand the amount of pressure it can tolerate during the mo modeling section we can clearly model the uh, cardiac stents and arteries as a simple rc circuit the c or capacitor is the arteries since the blood flow increase or blood flow increases the arteries dilates and can save more blood pressure however after the contractions the pressure reduces and the cardiac and the artery can release the extra amount of blood flow into the arteries so after we made this model we understood that the maximum of pressure occurs in the center of each mesh so according to this simulation we can clearly understand and clearly see that the best structure to develop an optimal cardiac stent is using one millimeter and three millimeter diameter vessels. Thanks for paying attention to this lecture.